Um, hey all, uh, thanks very much for coming. Um, so yeah, as, uh, as we said, my name is Josh uh, and this is Asita and we're here from the city of Burundara to talk about Azure DevOps for Drupal. So our municipality in Melbourne's east and like many other local governments in Australia, have our public website Drupal 10 based and hosted on Acrea. We also have a Microsoft based infrastructure with tools available for government organisations. So we look for opportunities uh, to leverage the tools in her inherited from Microsoft and Atlassian to improve our development and deployment cycle of the website. So in this presentation today, uh, I'll be taking you through some, some of the introduction of the DevOps practices, processes and the benefits. I'll then pass over to Asitha, who go into more detail uh, and present how to integrate Azure DevOps uh, with Drupal development and deployments. From there, we can connect the dots amongst the different tools and the platforms such as Azure, Acquia and Jira. We're planning to demo how the Azure DevOps webhooks, Jira automa automations, Acquia hooks can make the end-to-end -end integration and DevOps processes smoother. Also, we'll be discussing some challenges along our journey for improvement at the city of Burundara and any other alternative methods um, you might use in a similar implementation. So currently, I am the digital delivery lead uh, at Burundara, where I manage and prioritize our feature development, um, utilize agile practices, and, and the conduit between our development and our digital experience team. Hasitha is the full stack engineer for Drupal and our lead developer, um, and maintains our Drupal website and our WordPress-based WordPress forms um, and comes from a wealth of experience as a PHP and .NET developer. We first crossed paths at the city of Casey over uh, six years ago where we worked on and delivered multiple Drupal websites together and continued our professional journey. At Burundara, we had the need to move away from a previous vendor and wanted to take on a lot of that responsibility in-house and do it ourselves. During this migration, we had to consider our own continuous integration and continuous delivery and deployment to build our own CICD. We'll talk more of the benefits later, but our goal was to have a greater control and flexibility to choose the tools that we wanted and to work and interact, uh, interact more efficiently. Azure DevOps is a freely usable tool to build upon, and without extra cost and internal improvements, it was there for us to utilize. While we have adapted and will constantly change our Jira instance, we love Jira and we're already used to the straightforward configuration. Further to that, our site was already on Acquia, so we needed a CICD that will work with all three. Azure, Jira, and Acquia. Um, here is a quick snapshot, um, which I'm sure you have a bit of knowledge on already. Um, but our DevOps and CICD sets out to continuously integrate and continuously deliver to streamline through the software development lifecycle. This process promotes greater communication between digital teams to deliver code changes more often and most importantly, reliably. So some of the benefits we realized overall was a reduction uh, in the, our deployment time, being able to see what stage of the development lifecycle each task and where each release is at. But having more direct control of our deployments means that we've been able to increase our delivery time uh, to production from an eight to 12 week turnaround down to about four to six weeks. While this improvement in quality in our Azure pipeline has given greater transparency for the developers, the integration to our Jira instance has also helped the delivery team get live statuses. So during the planning and monitoring, uh, this helps the, hey, where is this at? Or is this in testing now? Or what environment is this in? Having introduced and tweaked the use of our CI/CD, we have increased reliability and confidence. Even if errors are present, they are easily identified and are picked up early in the process in lower environments that are not customer facing. We briefly considered the manual approach in the short term, but are so glad we spent the time to automate. The quality checks that have been introduced can pick up if anything is failing or indeed when it has passed in the process. While our testing and UAT maturity is growing, it has helped that everyone involved in our cross-functional team can transparently see where our development is at. From the development side and approvals of pull requests, we don't need to waste time on manual steps um, and, and has reduced human error and potential mistakes. Now that this is picked up continuously, we have further synced our automation to display messages in Teams um, for that immediate feedback. Uh, so the overall benefits being more efficient and agile while decreasing bugs and failures means that great internal team optimization and a better outcome for our customers. Uh, now while there are many different uh, infinitive uh, symbols of the CICD process, um, here you can see the standard cycle across the multiple stages. The tools and platforms we are using at Burundara are specific to our Drupal website project. While some of these tools and platforms can be common in your organization, uh, you might need to use your own tools and platforms based on the requirements and experience of your project. 
We will talk to just some of the other alternatives uh, later on. Uh, but for now, let's dig deep. So uh, Hasitha will be talking through some of the challenges we face uh, in the initial run through, um, and will run us through a demo of Azure uh, DevOps and Jira. Okay, um, thanks Josh. Hi everyone, um, I'm Hasita, as Josh mentioned. Um, I'm the full stack developer um, in the city of Burundara um, for Drupal especially. Um, so my job is um, like digging a bit deeper. I'm sure you are here to um, see a little bit more technical side um, of like how we did it and um, how we did the integration, how smoothly it's working um, or things like that. So um, first of all, a um, bit of challenges. Um, so everyone else and like all the projects, we also had some challenges um, with our, especially with our platforms and the stack. Uh, because as Josh mentioned, so we are a government, a local government organization. So Microsoft Azure and Microsoft uh, stack is kind of obvious um, tooling. Um, platform to us and it's free um, so we had Jira um, because we love Jira um, for Confluence and <coughs> other like program management um, and everything and also um, yeah we, we wanted to um, integrate um, Azure DevOps because we had that freely available um, for us in our local government with Jira um, and with our other um, Drupal-based um, um, resources and tooling. So the first task uh, was like finding a better integration add-on um, or tool uh, to integrate Jira with um, Azure DevOps. That was a challenge because if you check in Jira um, in Marketplace, there are many add-ons available, uh, but most of them like there is a cost um, in one end and the other end um, you won't get most of the uh, features you are looking for um, so for an example you might need end-to-end -end integra integration um, like you want to see everything um, reflected in jira um, what is happening on azure dev website but you won't get um, everything so most of the tools available or add-ons available are just for uh, migration like if you want to migrate all the jira board items or tasks or issues into Azure DevOps board. So that is what they are for. Um, but we found few tools and um, after a bit of um, research and everything and considering the cost as well, because when it comes to government cost is a um, very, um, yeah, very um, high factor um, we have to consider. And also, um, so how to report back the DevOps release uh, pipeline status into Jira and let the Jira issues um, and Jira side know, okay, so this has happened and these tickets got affected, um, things like that. So how do we do that? And um, yeah, some of the add-ons are providing this uh, functionality, but um, the pipeline we had created already was a Azure YAML pipeline, if you know. So there are two ways um, you can create pipelines in Azure DevOps. One is um, the classic editor. So you can use kind of a visual editor. You can add the steps, um, you can configure them. So that is one way of um, doing that. And the other way is like um, the YAML file. So you write down everything in a YAML file. Um, you drew palace, you know YAML now uh, uh, more than anyone, I guess. So then that YAML file will um, take place when it um, comes to Azure DevOps so when running the pipeline tasks and everything so it's not visually um, like available in the ui um, it, it is um, just code based but the problem is if you use the yaml file uh, method uh, yaml method yaml pipeline we can't report um, back this pipeline status or release pipeline status back into um, jira so because of that, we had to build um, the whole thing again in classic uh, method, classic pipeline. Um, so the other thing is um, we had a 
one YAML pipeline that was a build pipeline. Uh, if you know Azure DevOps, there are two different pipelines. One is build pipeline, the other one is release pipeline. So build is responsible for testing, like if you are doing linting and code sniffing and everything um, to check the code standards and everything. So build pipeline is responsible for basically testing um, or building your um, code base every time when someone merge um, any pull request into your code repository or main branch. So um, the release pipeline is to deploy or ship your artifacts into whatever the hosting um, platform mainly. Um, so we didn't have a release pipeline. So we had to create a new release pipeline um, in the classic method um, to get overcome this um, challenge and also um, capturing the development um, environment. So that was because we have like four different um, environments. So one is obviously the production, but we have other three um, non-dev, um, non, non prod um, environments in our um, Acquia hosting um, environment. So dev, alpha, beta, then only it's going to uh, production. So because of that, we had to um, capture this environment um, exactly, so which environment we have deployed this code into and report that back to Jira as well. So um, the other thing is capturing the end of deployment. So for an example, you know, once um, the deployment finished from Azure DevOps end, obviously it will just report back to Jira, okay, deployment was successful, but that's not the end of the deployment because we just shipped our artifacts into Acquia. Now, Acquia is running a separate hooks um, to, if you are using Acquia, there are some cloud hooks and things um, in Acquia. They will be running to clear cache, uh, import configurations, um, sync files, and things like that, right? So those are the Drupal stuff um, we do after each and every deployment. So after those ran, and if they were successful, we needed the uh, final confirmation, okay, this is now um, successfully deployed into Acquia environment as well. So we had to build a um, kind of a new um, integration um, for that one. So these were the challenges we faced um, when we were um, doing this integration. Um, so let's um, go into details maybe. Um, so this is a very clumsy diagram. I know most of you can't see it. Don't worry. I just wanted to um, yeah, show you main components. So we have Azure DevOps project in this uh, blue um, rectangle. And we have um, Acquia Cloud application in this blue rectangle. And above we have um, Jira uh, project and all the web hooks and um, inside the Jira project. So in Azure DevOps also we have some web hooks and also um, in Acquia Cloud, we have some Acquia Cloud hooks and uh, things like that. So these three pieces, uh, we connected each other uh, with these web hooks and um, different add-ons um, we um, selected to get this um, integration done. So um, let's go into details. I will just um, stop the presentation slideshow uh, from here and go into the browser. So you will see um, how we have done things. OK, so a bit of um, introduction about Azure DevOps. I think um, if anyone is not familiar uh, about Azure Dev DevOps, so you can see basically uh, what's available in Azure DevOps stack. So you can see um, in the beginning, you, ha you have the overview, summary, dashboards, wiki kind of thing. Wiki is kind of confluence if you're using Jira. Um, dashboard is, it's a pretty dashboard. You can uh, put some widgets and see the um, status of the releases or builds or whatever. And then uh, you have boards um, at the second. Boards is exactly Jira. So if you are using, if you, if you don't want to use Jira, um, if you want to use just the Azure DevOps uh, for everything, you can use um, Azure boards, uh, DevOps boards and you can have Kanban project there. Um, you have all the tasks, you can create all the tasks. The integration will be seamless as well because you don't need separate add-ons and things like that to communicate back to um, Jira, the status and everything. Um, 
So um, we are not using <coughs> Azure boards, unfortunately. So we love Jira still. Um, so because of that, um, we went through all this hassle. And uh, the repos. So if you're using GitLab, um, GitHub, Bitbucket, that's fine. Uh, but there is a repository uh, feature in Azure DevOps as well. So you can use that. We are using that one at the moment. And then um, as the um, next one, we have the pipelines. So inside the pipelines, um, I will um, show you in a minute. And then you can have test plans as well as um, you can publish artifacts as well. So there are heaps of things you can do, uh, but some of the things are coming with uh, premium um, price as well, I think, um, based on your license level um, on uh, Microsoft, um, they will change. Um, so this is our project. As you can see, many of them got um, yeah, skipped or like invisible uh, because we are not using them. Um, so I have made it um, hidden. Um, so we are using only um, dashboard, wiki, repos, um, and pipeline in our project. Um, so this is basically um, the summary page. Um, so it is taking whatever the readme file uh, from the main repository, we can set it up. And uh, this is the dashboard um, we have created for our project. Um, so you can see um, the releases, different releases into different stages. Um, so it's automatically capturing the stage um, we have released into and the release number and all that. And um, the deployment status in each um, environment of Acquia. Um, but you can see there are two uh, blank uh, widgets as well. That is because of a known issue um, in Azure DevOps at the moment, because we, there is no way um, we can capture a separate um, tag pattern um, into um, this widget. So because we are deploying a specific tag into beta environment and another specific uh, pattern of tag into production environment, we can't cap capture that one. But we are deploying normally the develop branch into the dev environment that is possible to capture and we are deploying the master branch into alpha environment so that is possible to capture um, unfortunately yeah that's um, there are feature requests um, related to that one but it's not available yet and um, this is the um, wiki I'm not going into details so you can do like confluence this is the repository not going into details again like uh, github bitbucket and everything and this is um, pipeline so this is the build pipeline um, as you can see and this is our uh, build pipeline and you can see all the failures and successful uh, builds here and you have um, here the pipeline steps and all that so we are running different different um, steps inside this one different commands so I'm not going to detail in going into detail with the time um, into the commands but yeah, if you interested um, in implementing this um, Azure DevOps or integrating Azure DevOps um, with your um, Drupal site organization, we can help definitely. Uh, we will pass our contacts to you. Um, so this each and every steps responsible for building and testing and preparing artifacts um, for the release. And you can see we are using some scripts as well um, inside some um, folders. Um, in the repository um, for building and testing of course and also um, this is the release pipeline um, so release pipeline you can see um, again different environments um, we are deploying into so each one of those have um, different um, yeah, steps again we are getting the artifact um, we build from the previous uh, build pipeline and then we extract the files and um, push them into Acquia repository. So then um, Acquia is automatically starting um, the process of deploying that uh, tag or branch um, into that environment. So uh, there are some scripts related to that deployment as well, not going into details again, uh, but yeah, deploying commands, um, there are, uh, we are using some robot scripts as well uh, for deploying commands. And this is Jira, so you can see, um, in the Jira board, we have a bit, bit more um, details like um, development and um, all that. Um, so it's showing environment. We have deployed into dev environment, this ticket, and things like that. 
So um, we have used this add-on um, to integrate Jira and um, Azure. So this add-on um, is from a company called Move Work Forward. There is a cost, of course, um, uh, involved, but um, it, it's not that significant, I guess. And uh, we are using, um, so it's automatically adding these hooks um, into Azure DevOps um, to report all the, um, all the stages, like um, once pull request created, or once pull request merged, or once pull request updated, or anything. So it's reporting back to Jira. Um, so we are using this um, add-on as well. This is a free add-on um, created by Microsoft um, Azure DevOps. This is for the releases. And um, if you if you go in inside a ticket, you can see um, we can see the branch um, responsible for this ticket and the commits for commits and pull requests and number of builds and development uh, or deployment stages. So in uh, code, um, there is a separate um, tab called called in Jira. So you can see um, all the pull requests and um, who approved them, who um, yeah, who raised them, and things like that. So someone like product owner don't, doesn't need to go into the Azure DevOps to see all this stuff. And there's another um, detailed view in deployment tab um, of Jira. So you can see like a Gantt chart um, kind of thing. So each and every um, issue in which stages it was deployed into um, different different environments. Um, so you can create releases in Jira and um, you can add those um, issues into these releases and then it will automatically um, do like this. So you can see this version we have already released, this version is still in progress, unreleased and things like that. And um, there are some hooks as well like automations in Jira. So we are using those automations as well. Uh, mostly to um, report the Acquia um, deployment status back into Jira um, using uh, one of these um, yeah, um, automations. So what we are doing is we are just calling this Jira um, URL uh, from Acquia um, once the Acquia deployment finished. So it will report back the um, status of the Acquia deployment and we will update it on this end and um, yeah there are some scripts related to that as well so this is the um, this is that script on the Acquia cloud hook um, and there are some other things we can do but yeah um, Josh will uh, take over from here um, it's it's a quick demo I know um, with the time we got but yeah if you are interested of um, yeah, implementing this one or getting some help uh, with your implementation or deployment um, we are here to help so just show it over to you. Yeah, we had a backup plan of videos if uh, that didn't work, so that's good. Um, great, so yeah, this is a continuous improvement for us um, and we're still working through this. Um, so we've demoed the initial phase and are still unpacking um, what we have to come uh, and some next steps. In terms of cost, there is that uh, small annual fee for the Jira add-on Azure DevOps um, for Jira, but it isn't significant. But we could try uh, and build our own, or you could as well. Uh, we've noticed that there have been some limitations uh, where the add-on has not triggered some of the events in the tasks in Jira. Um, so we've tried to combat this by making some rules in Jira but the uh, add-on is not supporting some of these events. Uh, you can mitigate this uh, completely, like as, as Ethan said, and use um, Azure boards uh, and move away from Jira, um, but I'm still waiting for him or someone else to try and convince me to do that. Uh, so in our case, Jira isn't going away anytime soon, um, and we're going to try and uh, play with some more of these rules and overcome the restrictions of the current add-on. Uh, so that way, if the development passes through a branch, it is created and it moves that ticket from in progress, and uh, if it's committed, it moves to UAT. Um, and then if, it, if the build fails, then it might move back to in progress. Um, so while the initial f uh, phase of our test automation um, is still underway uh, for code standards and linting, um, we're just getting set up and it's not uh, li linking back to our pipeline just yet. By getting even more immediate feedback for the developers means the investment in test automations will be well worthwhile. Uh, this will help reduce the reliance on a dedicated test resource and manual uh, regression testing for the whole team. 
Ultimately, this will reduce our time to market. If there's less time spent on manual regression testing and there's no need to manually move tickets in Jira, we can continue our efficiency. So as promised, as before we wrap up, um, some alternate tools. So earlier we worked through some of the ones that we're using, um, but there are a few alternatives out in the market. The suite on screen could be something for your reference and to play back afterwards in the video as well. So obviously we're using Jira and Azure DevOps, um, but there are many different uh, project management tools out there with more simple or advanced planning. Similar with managing and building releases, uh, releases um, currently we're using Azure DevOps, um, but there are several others out there. Um, just yesterday we recently saw a demo of Acquia uh, Code Studio um, that seemed to have a nice tool chain and some good automations already built in as well. Uh, on the testing front, um, we're just got, uh, getting started using Cypress for test automation. Um, and we're going to use that for um, building out some more test cases. And finally, in terms of operating and monitoring, we're currently using things like Site Improve and Google Analytics, um, but there's a whole speed out there. So thank you very much. Um, please feel free to contact uh, myself and Asitha if you have any questions. Uh, we're happy to share with other uh, local government agencies um, or for anyone else who's looking to implement a similar approach. So thanks again. Um, yeah, thank you for, uh, for your presentation. It was really interesting. Um, I understand that, um, and I didn't know it, that in governments, when you're a government agency, you get Azure for free, which is which is really good. That's <laughs> so you get a lot of good stuff for free. Yeah. Um, for the rest of us, <laughs> if you if you had to pay for Azure, how would your presentation have have, have changed? It's, I know it's hypothetical, but yeah. uh, even though you're getting Azure for free, you still decided to ditch some of the features and go for Jira. Uh, if you had to pay a lot of money for Azure, would you maybe not have used it at all or go Amazon so, or use more Acquia stuff or would the balance have changed? Yeah, so answer to that is because I'm using um, Azure DevOps for one of my personal projects. Um, so the thing is, I'm paying only $7.95 um, or whatever for the month for the one email account. So I have one Microsoft 365 account, and it's allowing me um, to use Azure DevOps up to five users. So I can invite external users um, up to five, but, but for large, large organizations, you can't do that, obviously. But for small scale, you can still use um, Azure for like almost for a very minimal price. So. Yeah, you can still use, but like test plans, you won't get it um, with that price. You have to have the upper um, level, but still all the basic features we are using at the moment um, in our company, like city of Burundara, you can use it with that um, one Microsoft email account. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good, I think. Yeah. That question. Um, for your, um, this is my technical question, but for your deployment, um, you have like the site, the setting focal file and your uh, uploaded files. And when you do your deployment, how do you deploy without deleting those, um, like the site specific files? Um, you mean deleting the files in the server? Uh, yes, yeah, so yeah, I guess you delete all the files, put the new code in, and then put your, like, settings like the file and then your media upload files back again? Like, yeah. Not, yeah, not really. It, it's um, because we are using the Acquia repository as well. So what we do is we just ship our code from Azure DevOps to Acquia repository. So what will happen is once the code get into Acquia repository, the cloud hooks will start running <laughs> because if it is the uh, de develop um, branch we have pushed, the changes with, so it will start the deployment from Acquia repository to um, Acquia cloud environment. So that will take care of that one. It's not deleting all the files and um, it's not resetting everything. It's just like um, you have the repository with you. Um, so it's only the changes are affecting. Yeah. Yeah. Can. Um, 
so you're using uh, Azure DevOps for your personal project as well. What are the main differences or benefits that you found using that over something like GitHub or GitLab? Um, nothing much really, but especially when we, if you're using GitHub, um, you can't, um, you can make the repository private without paying. Um, so it has to be public because my personal project is a .NET based project especially. And um, because of that, it's easier to deal with Azure DevOps because we are uh, deploying also into Azure Cloud. So that is like making sense altogether. But for this one as well, like um, if you're using um, another repository uh, option, we have to uh, pay for that one. Uh, but this one is coming free um, with that. So we, no, we are not um, yeah, exposing the repository as a public repository because um, yeah, of the government policies and all that. So yeah, that's why we chose uh, Azure DevOps repo.